We are live now. Hey there. There we are. So hey, this is uh, this is James Gall with uh, God Encounters Ministries, and this is our new uh, broadcast weekly called Insight for the Days in Which We Live. And my co-host is my youngest daughter, Rachel Tucker, who will be having her 30th birthday on Monday in lockdown or <laughs> whatever that is. So it's like, that's not right, but it's okay. Anyway, so, hey, this is Insight uh, for the days in which we live on Facebook Live. And this is my youngest daughter, Rachel Tucker. So, Rachel, why don't you greet the people? Hey, guys. We're excited to be with you again. We are figuring out how to do all of this. So, thank you for joining along on the journey as we um, figure this out. But um, we're excited to be doing this every week with you guys um today our theme is going to be um plagues prophecy and prayer which i'm really excited to kind of flesh this out and hear it myself but um first of all we want to hear where everyone is from can you drop in the comments where what city or state or province country that you guys are from we would love to hear and connect with you guys and then um, also, I just want to go ahead and share with you guys our theme verse for the whole Insight Facebook Live show. It comes from Daniel 12, 3, which reads, those who have insight will shine brightly like the brightness of the expanse of heaven and those who lead the many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. That's so good. Um, so we are going, so our topic obviously is plagues, prophecy, and prayer. And throughout the, this uh, session, I would love for you guys to submit any questions you have regarding this topic, because we're going to have some Q and A at the end. So please send in any questions you have and I will uh, go through them and we'll pick a few of them to do live. And then, um, yeah. I'm going to also share with you guys one thing that we have really quickly. This is our prayer special that we have going on right now. Um, as you can see, we have multiple bundles that are up and they are usually $200 and each bundle is $79 right now. Um, Dad, do you wanna go ahead and tell them a little bit about what is incorporated in them? Yeah, that's great. Thank you, Rachel. So these prayer bundles, they normally are, um, you know, as Rachel said, they're normally um, uh, $200 through our resource center. Now, these are not available on Amazon or someplace like that. This prayer curriculum kits are only available at the resource center of the store at God Encounters Network or jamesgall.com. So with everyone, you'll see there is a book. There is a study guide. But there is also then your choice of the 12 sessions. They're either CDs, DVDs, MP3, that is a digital audio, or MP4, the video digital format. So that's why it is that amount of money. So you're getting the book, which will be like $17 or so, the study guide, which are normally 20 and then the entire DVD CDs, because these are 12 lessons that go with the book, go with the study guide. And by the way, this is a great thing to do with others. But of course, right now, a lot of us are at home, but it still is a great tool to do. So here's my four prayer curriculum kits. Prayer Storm, Strike the Mark is the newest of these. There you get exposed to a variety of prayers. Praying God's heart is a specialty on prophetic intercession. The tending the fires of intercession is my first set of materials. It's on the watch of the Lord. So prayer storm, crisis intervention, 
strike the mark. I expose you to 10 models of prayer. Praying of God's heart is on prophetic intercession and tending the fires is more the watch of the Lord. So I hope that that helps you have a little understanding and you just need to get one of everything. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, well, let's just pray really quickly before we dive on in. Oh, Lord, we thank you so much for the ability to gather virtually even though we're not together. God, this is a, an amazing ability in the day and the age we live in, Lord. And we just ask that uh, your spirit would go forth. Uh, I know it's gone before us already, but we ask that you would, um, your spirit would fill at each person's home where they are right now, God, that you would um, meet us and yeah. bring wisdom and discernment and enlighten our hearts, bring hope to us in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. So this is an intriguing title, isn't it, for this particular insight? How did I get this title? It's because last week we did two insights. We did one on Tuesday. We did one on Thursday. And in the middle of doing one of them, I prophesied about this week. And I said, oh, well, I'm going to do it on plagues, prophecy, and prayer. I'm going to talk about plagues. So that was spontaneous. So I listened to myself. And that's why we're doing this, because that was what appeared to be on God's heart that was put on my heart. Is this ever an unusual subject? Yes, it is, but not for the days in which we live. It is plagues, prophecy, and prayer. Three components, plagues, prophecy, did this catch God by surprise? And where does prayer fit in? Well, it fits in all over the place. Okay, now, many people are acquainted with the Passover story. You know, we're coming up. April 8th is Passover. This is, what, April 2nd? And so I don't call it April Fool's Day. I call, call it April Wise Men's Day, okay? So that's what this is. But anyway, many people are acquainted with the Passover story that we will celebrate Passover in a week. Some have even watched, okay, come on, the Ten Commandments. And what is one of the things you remember in the Ten Commandments? The Ten Plagues. So I'm just trying to build a bridge because some of our biblical knowledge is vast. And for some of us, this is new. So if you ever watch the Ten Commandments movie, one of the things that'll stand out is the dramatic depiction of the Ten Plagues, a Hollywood moment to remember. But it's more than that. It's a part of God's story. Right now, the entire world is being invited into a critical Passover moment. Remember a little review. Last week, I talked about this too shall come to pass. I've done a couple of podcasts, the coronavirus. And the second one is this too shall come to pass. So remember Right now, the entire world is going to experience a historic Passover like the Passovers of the past of biblical proportion. I know what I just said. What I said is huge. This Passover is going to go down in history as one of the greatest Passovers since Passover started. Like the Hebrew slaves in Egypt, on the first Passover night, what did they do? The families of the earth were what? On lockdown. Are you starting to get why we're doing this? I'm going to say it again. Like the Hebrew slaves in Egypt, on the first Passover night, the families of the earth were on lockdown hiding in their homes. And where is God with the Jewish people? Where is God with the Hebrews in Egypt? Where are you, God? And we could be saying, and some of you might be, where are you, God, right now? Is he aware 
of the current pandemic? Is God involved in the process at all? Well, I want to give you one Bible verse for this insight. It's from Jeremiah chapter 28, verse 8. The prophets who were before me and before you from ancient time prophesied against many lands and against great kingdoms of war and calamity and pestilence. The word pestilence could be trans could be stated and plagues. So prophets, true prophets sent by God are not afraid of addressing difficult issues. And prophets of old were sent by God, it says of ancient times, and they even prophesied against, that says against, I think that's interesting, but against lands, great kingdoms, war, calamity, and plagues. So this coronavirus, is it a wake up call? to the world, is it also a, what you call a dry run for even more sobering coming prophetic events? Huh. Is this a one-time thing? Folks, is this a one-time thing and that we're in a global lockdown it's very intense in Nashville right now. I mean, our spirit-filled governor has just released a word of that we are now, not just in the three weeks, it's been extended and we are literally in a lockdown now. In at least in, yeah, we are in the state of Tennessee. God, where are you? Did this take you by surprise? Where are you right now? When the, epi when the pandemic just broke out, in our area at a couple of nursing homes and extended care places. Oh my gosh, really? God, where are you? But we need to get seriously redemptive perspective. We need his insight. Consider these three questions. What do the scriptures say about plagues? Two. What is the role of plagues in biblical history? And three, what is the role, what is prophesied about plagues in the future? Now, I'm not going to touch that part today, but I think we're going to do a part two next week, and I'm going to get into that. So, is the present pandemic a dry run? Let me give you, this is plagues prophecy and prayer. Let me give you a little prophetic perspective. I gave you a prophetic verse. What was it? Jeremiah 28 verse 8. A dear prophetic friend of mine and of many, John Paul Jackson, known for his amazing video television work in particular, called Dreams and Mysteries, and was the founder of Streams Ministries. John Paul and I worked together in Kansas City at one point in time with the fabled Kansas City prophets. John Paul Jackson, who is with the Lord now, gave a prophetic word in 2008. Here is the exact quote. The Lord told me, there would be a pandemic. This was delivered in 2008. The Lord told me there would be a pandemic that came. That the first one, he's, he didn't just say there would be one. The first one would prove to be little but feared. But the second one that comes would be serious. So there is a pandemic that is going to come. So Rachel, what do you think about what I've shared so far? I mean, I love it, honestly, because it, it puts things in the perspective. You know, we, it, it's really easy to view our lives 
very microscopic how what's being affected sorry look at my nails my toddler gave me a nail polish i'm sorry <laughs> or she gave me a manicure <laughs> she did not give you nail polish she gave me a manicure she's three can you tell cool. um, <laughs> it even matches it does match she matches matches my new map <laughs> um yeah i i've been thinking a lot about um how microscopic we can view our lives and god wants to broaden our perspective and so yeah, the hearing about plagues throughout society kind of, or throughout hundreds of years, kind of makes you realize, oh, we're not alone in this. This is not the first time something like this has happened. And there's honestly hope. It makes me like want to ask questions like, what is going to be the outcome? What is God like shaking up in this? It makes me kind of excited, um, but also... I don't know. It just kind of keeps you on the edge of your seat. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to be, um, I'm not going to lie and say, I haven't had moments where I'm like stir crazy and going, I want to get out of my house. <laughs> Absolutely. I want you to know? get out of my house. Yeah. You know, but we have to have that, the big perspective. We have to see God's perspective to find peace in this. So yeah, I, I just wrote down three words. Yeah. Now, listen, listen, of course, everybody listen to this. The enemy is, it is a virus for sure. I am not in denial. And I'm going to give you some statistics historically about pandemics in a moment. But you know, the greater battle, it's about three words in English that start with an F. Fear, fatigue, and fatalism. Mm. This is what a lot of the battle is, is about fear it's really a pandemic of fear it has a basis absolutely hundreds of thousands are being infected and we are over 10,000 i don't know the count right now honestly of how many people have have passed i'm talking globally though but there is a battle that is beyond the virus and listen to these three words and if they hit you, come out of alignment with this fear. Now, we've talked already some in the previous insights about that fear. But listen to this one, fatigue. Well, you got time to rest. Don't you have time to? But the spirit of Antichrist comes to wear down the saints. And so there is a weariness because you know what? In the U.S., Instead of this getting lifted in a week, we are in a lockdown mode of one form or another, at least through April 30th now. So a, ba a, a battle that we have not fought yet, but you will, is fatigue. A second one that many people in the prophetic community need to wage war on this, fatalism. That's where everything ends up getting negative. It's where God's purposes are just negative. It's that uh, there's no, we don't know a, a redemptive purpose in God. Uh, you know, it, it's just, what are the three words? Hey, Rachel, do you remember? What are the three words I just gave the people? Do you know? Fear. Yes, yeah, sorry, I was responding to comments. <laughs> okay, fear, fatigue. <laughs> fatigue. And, and fatalism. fatalism. What's, fa what's fatalism mean to you? Uh, dying. That is having a negative mindset. <laughs> fatal. I fatal. think I think of like fatal, like, oh, it's, it it's over. life. Yeah. Fatal means it's over. What it means is, get this, this is the end. Hmm. That's fatalism. Fatalism makes people furious, makes people frustrated, make people get in fatigue and they go, this, my gosh, is this the end of the world? That comes out of negativity, fear, fatigue. It produces fatalism and it's something the body of Christ needs delivered of is fatalism. Well, let me maybe um, go on and, and give some of the statistics that we did some research on. What do you think? 
Yeah, before we move mm -hmm. forward to that, I just want to remind people we're going to do a time of Q&A at the end. So if you guys have any questions about this subject, um, we would love to address them while we're on live. So please go ahead and start throwing in those questions so we can um, uh, sort through them and have time for them for Q&A at the end. But yeah. yes, I would love to hear these statistics. Okay, so here's what I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to avoid something. I want to give insight for the days in which we live. Listen to these statistics. Okay, has there been plagues before? What has been the result of the plagues? By the way, on some of these plagues I will mention, they are named after their geography. And I know that people are struggling that President Trump has called it the China virus. But folks, that is not addressing something. It really isn't as an ethnic issue the Chinese virus. No, that's not it. It is simply identifying a place of origin, and that is not without historic precedence. Anyway, I just thought I would toss that in. Listen to the, this, this plague. The HIV AIDS pandemic from 2005 to 2012 36 million people died in that period of time, in that seven, eight year period of time from a global plague. HIV, AIDS pandemic, 2005 to 2012. The Hong Kong flu, the Hong Kong pandemic, 1968. 1 million people around the world. In 1956 to 1958, there was a global pandemic. It was called the Asian flu. The Asian flu from 1956 to 1958, 2 million people died. In 1918, listen to this one the Spanish flu. See, these are a lot of these are viruses. So they're called flus. In 1918, the Spanish flu pandemic from 1918, how many people do you think that that impacted? 20 to 50 million people when the population in the world wasn't close to what it is today. That would have been a big percent of population globally. The Spanish flu pandemic, 1918, 20 to 50 million people. I bet you that there were a lot of new people that were thinking fatalism, this is the end. 20 to 50 million, but it wasn't the end. Now I'm working my way backwards. The sixth cholera pandemic of 1910 to 1911, 800,000 people died. The flu H3N8 pandemic of 1889 to 1890. How many people? One million people from the flu H3N8 pandemic. The third cholera pandemic in 1852 to 1860, one million people. Now, hold on. It's about to reach the worst time frame. The Black Death. Have you ever heard of that? It was obviously talked about and in, 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 in specifically in reference, of course, to Europe. The Black Death, the Black Plague. The Black Death, bu bubonic plague. I'm sure at least you've heard of the term. 1346 to 1353, that plague lasted, I think, 17 years. Listen to the number, 75 to 
hundred million people. If it was even a hundred million, the percent according to the world population in the 1300s, that would be astronomical. It would be astronomical. The Black Plague, bubonic plague of 1346 to 1353, 75 to 200 million people. The plague of Justinian, I've only got two more I'm going to give you. The plague of Justinian at 541 to 542, bu bubonic plague. 25 million people died in 541 from the what was called the plague of Justinian. One more, the Antonine plague in 165 AD. 5 million people people and 165, 165 years after the death of Jesus, this plague went out around the world. 5 million people died from it. Don't you think that they probably thought at the Spanish flu that that was the end of the world? Don't you think that when uh, the Black Death broke out, that they thought that with 75 to 200, that that was the end of the world, but it wasn't. I want to help give us perspective because I believe there will not be millions of people die from this coronavirus. No, there will not be. One of the reasons is because historical data, we can actually receive encouragement from knowing history. We can look at prophecy, but we can add what? Prayer. And you take a word, and you don't have to accept the final outcome of the big major crisis, but you can cut it off. You can lessen it being a person of prayer and also a biblical thing called quarantine. Okay, so I just gave a lot of data to you, but I hope it helps give some perspective. So Rachel, is there some uh, input or want to tell people how to do the Q&A here in a little bit? Yeah, um, I love one person has asked, which we will, we will be addressing, um, what does the word of God say? What about this? And so I'm really excited to hear um, what, the word of God says about this, but um, it's kind of fun seeing people hop on. Sebastian's on here. Oh, great. David Saluka. I saw oh. Walt Meyer joined on. Anyway, awesome. <laughs> shout out to all of Yeah, they're all, all friends. Yes. Walt Meyer in uh, Santa Maria, California, David Saluka up in um, the Minneapolis, and Sebastian Olaru. Oluru in Vancouver, British Columbia. So yeah. welcome guys, great to yeah. be with you. So if you guys are just hopping on, um, we would love to hear, first of all, where you're from in the comments. So far we've already had, I mean, it's amazing. It's so cool. There yeah. is some people from the Philippines, people from Trinidad, people from Chile, from, um, let me see where the UK, from Uruguay. Did I say Trinidad? Um, I don't know. There's so many cool countries. Australia, Nashville. What, what's up? Um, anyway, so many awesome places. That's but um, yeah, so for Q&A, if you guys have any questions concerning this topic, like historically, plagues that have happened in our, in our history, um, if you guys have any of those comments, drop it in to our, our thread on live and to our comments, and um, we will address a few of them. And so one person has asked, what does the Bible say about this, uh, you know, about plagues? Another person um, has asked, biblical thing called quarantine, question mark? So um, those are two things that we can kind of address really quickly. Okay, well, let me uh, do some of that, you know, to begin with. We did you know, I honestly forget a little between the podcast I did, which I did two God Encounters Today podcast on coronavirus, is there really any hope? And then a part two, coronavirus, this too shall come to pass. 
and then from the insights that we have done last week. Quarantine, question mark. It is, read the book of Leviticus. You will find it's part of what's called the health laws. So God put in place not just laws concerning morality, but he put in place another set of, you could say guidelines, but laws of health laws. Now, if we would abide by those health laws, they still have relevancy for today. One of them deals with quarantine. So let's deal with leprosy. We've talked about this before, that it could be sub transmitted through touch. So a person had to do what's called social distancing, and they would, they would be unclean, unclean, because they could not, people could not come near them and could not touch them. But that was an issue of self-distancing out of a God boundary of a health law. Quarantine, I gave the, the illustration earlier on the ark. They were in lockdown. The lockdown of the eight saved the, the entire race and caused the, as it was in the days of Noah, it became um, provision, preservation, protection, and then it led to the promise of a new era, and they were locked down in an ark. There's actually multiple illustrations in the Bible where people are set apart. Uh, uh, did God use John the Beloved in alone on the Isle of Patmos? That's how the entire whole book of Revelations came. Because he was alone, but he was not alone because Jesus came near. Now, I hope that just helped a little bit. You know, Rachel, what do you think of what I just shared? You know, they said, asked about the quarantine thing. Do you think that that maybe could help a little? Absolutely. I think it's, sorry, switching over to gallery view. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's awesome. It, okay. it just helps to know, like in history, that it's been done before. Yeah. Um, there's, I love this question that Becky sent in. She oh. is asking, how can we encourage non-believers in our family? Oh, that's great. Yeah, oh, let that. me, uh, let's, yeah, let's, let's, let's deal with that one. How can we encourage non-believers in our family? Well, a principle, first of all, that I know that uh, this lady is going to know, but I learned from Ed Silvosa. It is. I pray for my neighbor I talk to God about my neighbor before I talk to my neighbor about God. So let's just shift the word neighbor and family. I talk to God about my family before I talk to my family about God. You say, but that doesn't answer her question. It does in part. Because the person we need to talk to first is God about our family members. And we ask him to soften their heart. In my book, Prayer Storm, in the, one of those study guide specials that are there, I have a whole lesson on how to pray your family into God's family. And I take us through about 10 different things for us to pray that their heart of stone be changed to a heart of flesh, that God brings to their remembrance all of the good word of God they've ever heard, even if it's on a Christmas card, that the spirit of conviction concerning sin, righteousness, and judgment of, of God is released. We pray to the Lord of the harvest that he release laborers to the field. And so there's just four of them right there. I've got 10 of them in that prayer storm in that particular uh, class, uh, lesson, chapter, and so what, what are you going to do? Do I have any tips? I'm going to say, pray to God first. I'm going to say, do an act of kindness, because the Bible talks about the relationship of spouses, and it even says that a wife who's a believer can win her unbelieving husband unto the Lord by talking to him all the time about Jesus. That's not what it says. By observing your chaste behavior. 
So pray. And I just want to say, do an act of kindness. Do an act of kindness for your family. Okay, it's real simple. Pray, do an act of kindness. Now, but don't hold back. One of the things that you'll have to do is pray, do an act of kindness. And another thing would be, you need to resist fear yourself. Because fear would say, you're going to be rejected. That word, you've tried it before, and it's bounced off. No, there's a time and a season for everything. This is a time for prayer. This is a time for kindness. And this is a time to speak the truth in love. Okay? Hope it helps you a little bit. Yeah. Um, Amy has asked, what do you perceive is God's purpose in allowing us to be quarantined? Uh, yeah. So next week in part two, I'm going to go more into the plague and the purposes of God. Okay. So we, I'll touch this in part. So Rachel, could you tell me the question again? Yeah. What do you perceive is God's purpose in allowing okay. us to be quarantined? Yeah. So a lot of prophetic people, I included, have addressed that the Lord has given us a Sabbath, a time of rest. Now, the Bible says that God will heal the land when we meet 2 Chronicles 7, 14. When we confess our sin, we repent, we call upon the name of the Lord, we seek his face. It says he will forgive, but it also says this, he will heal the land. Now, Land heals when at rest. There's actually a biblical law, again, that you would work the fields for six years, and on the seventh year, they rested. And then you have the Jubilee. And in the Jubilee, you know, things are returned, all debts are forgiven, and things of that nature. So what is the purpose of God in a quarantine? But I'm going to say the purpose of a quarantine is health laws so that the disease is, is a boundary. Folks, the reason for quarantine is so that the disease is a boundary, is put around it. You go this far and no further. That's one of the best reasons, and don't overlook it. It's biblical. So it is to put a boundary, a wall around, a place of containment. One of the other purposes of a quarantine is rest. God speaks to us, not when we're all rushed. I'm not saying that he doesn't, but he speaks to us in particular when we are at peace and we are at rest. By the way, remember the three things that I shared earlier that um, is part of what we're dealing with. Fear, Remember that? We got to fight fear. What's the other word? Fatigue. We got to fight fatigue. We got to fight fatalism. There is no purpose in a quarantine. I, gosh, I'm going to go crazy. No, if you know the purpose to the process, you will prosper. Write that down. Somebody tweet that. I don't know if I've said that. When you know the purpose to the process, you will prosper. When you know the purpose of the process, you will prosper. Let's do it together. When you know the process of the purpose, no, it's when you know, excuse me, when you know the purpose of the process, you will prosper. One more time. When you know the purpose of the process, you will prosper. And so that will help in these days and times of safe in your house type thing. Okay. That's so good. Um, I'm just, I'm going to switch us over to, we have one other question and it leads into our next part. And that is, um, how should we be in prayer during this time? Yeah. By the way, there was another question that was like, what's a biblical perspective on plagues? 
I'm going to like go into that, I trust, in the part two next week on plagues and the purposes of God. And so we'll go into that because, you know, we don't want to take up too much time. So I did a little Q&A with you. I hope that that was helpful. But we're going to shift because there was a question because this on site this time is on plagues. We've, we've given statistics, prophecy. We've looked at a little bit of this prophetically, just a little, and prayer. So what are some prayer points for this period of time? Here, here are our few. One, pray for God to raise up mighty rivers of repentance, which will pull the plug on the pandemic. Hmm. We need, you know, right now, there are more prayer gatherings going on probably around the world than in any time in all history. Uh, some of them right now are called awakenings. There was one that I was a part of uh, last weekend on called Civil Righteousness. This was Sunday, I'm going to be on one called Awakening. And you know one of the main things? It is prayers of repentance. So first thing is prayer. Pray that God raises up a mighty river of repentance, which will pull the plug on this pandemic. Number two. Pray for healing of many who are sick and for the saving of many lives. There is a particular news broadcaster on a very liberal network on CNN, Cuomo, Governor Cuomo's brother, is a eloquent communicator. He has gotten struck with coronavirus. His family lives upstairs. He is quarantined in his basement and cannot see anyone. And you know what? He's a liberal. He's a this. He's a that. But God has put him on my heart to pray that he gets healed. And so pray for the healing of many who are sick and for the saving of many lives. Number two. Number three. I'm going to give you five prayer points. Three. Pray for the supernatural gifts of healing and workings of miracles to increase through praying believers. That's number three. Pray for the supernatural gifts of healings, workings of miracles, gift of faith, deliverance to be increased. That's three. Number four, pray for divine strategies in preparation for what if this is a first shaking and there's another because the Bible does say everything that can't be shaken will be shaken. So guess what? Let's learn as much wisdom as we can out of this. Because I wonder if this is a dress rehearsal for something later. Four, pray for divine strategies in preparation for future shakings. And so that we will even seize the moment even greater. Number five. Pray for the raising up of a prophetic army of prayer in Jesus' name. Pray the Ezekiel 37 army of God arises in Israel, in the Middle East, in, in Detroit, in, in Houston, in Miami, in New York City, in San Francisco, in Los Angeles, in, in, uh, in, uh, um, in Nashville, in, in Hong Kong, in, in Seoul, Korea, in, in, in uh, Durban, South Africa, in, in Paris, France, in uh, London, England, and in and, and all of these other places, in, in, uh, uh, in uh, uh, Tehran, uh, Iran, in the name of Jesus, in Baghdad, Iraq, in uh, um, um, uh, Mabasa, uh, uh, Kenya, or how about in New Delhi, India, or, or how about in um, Bangkok, Thailand, or in Moscow, Russia, or in Buenos Aires, Argentina, Holy God, we're asking that you raise up a prophetic, powerful, anointed army of God for such a time as this. Five prayer points. Remember, this is plagues, prophecy, and prayer. Pray for God to raise up a movement of, of repentance. Pray for healing of people who are sick. 
Pray for an increase of the supernatural gifts of the Spirit. Pray for divine strategies. And number five, ask God. We pray to the Lord of the harvest. Well, we're also going to pray not only for evangelists, we're going to pray for the greatest global prophetic army to be raised up and released in this hour in Jesus' name. Five prayer points. So I hope you got that. We got a lot of it in the comments. So if they didn't, they can um, copy and paste those for later. So you, you put them in the comments? Yes. There's some other people. Uh, Laura Harris Smith is on there too, typing them up. <laughs> oh, cool. Oh, great. Yeah. Well, Laura's right here. And her and her husband, Pastor Eastgate, created Christian Fellowship in Old Hickory. And we'll be doing a Hope Encounter seminar at uh, their church in the Donaldson Hermitage area on the last Saturday in June. And is it ever going to be perfect timing? Yeah. The Hope Encounter Seminar at Eastgate Creative Christian Fellowship on, I think it's Saturday, June 27th, maybe. Okay. Anyway. That's awesome. So I wanted to, go? Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, I just wanted to give a shout out to um, Avner Bosky for a lot of yes. the research of yes. um, that we're pulling from. Dad, you can, if, I don't know if you want to add anything to that. Yes, I meant to state that up to the front. Most of what I just recited is not from my original research. Now I add things, but I got that from a dear, dear friend of many years, Avner Bosky with Final Frontier and the Beersheba, Beersheba desert arid area of Southern Israel. So we've been friends for many years. Our families have been friends. And so I wanna thank um, Avner Bosky that I did use uh, a portion of what he did research on to help us for today. Yeah, it's so good. Well, I wanna go ahead and share um, this special one more time for those that are, have hopped on halfway through or they weren't here at the beginning of it. Um, we have a special going on, which is just, I mean, it's kind of perfect timing because prayer is exactly what all of us need to um, be exercising right now. Um, and we have four different bundles. Um, usually they're $200 and they are all $79 right now. You can find them at jamesgall.com. Um, or you can go to godencounters.com to access those. Okay. Hey, yeah. I want to just mention that I talked about praying your family into God's family. If you want that, that is in the prayer storm book and study guide. If you want, that's on the first one there at the upper left, that's prayer storm. That is where I talked about praying your family into God's family. It's in that set of materials. If you are wanting about pr the prophetic army, the prophetic warriors, that is in praying with God's heart on the lower left corner, the power and the purpose of prophetic intercession. So to put a little context, that's a distinction. Prayer Storm has a chapter on crisis intervention and praying your family into God's family. And the prophetic intercession, the Ezekiel prophetic army, that is in the power, uh, praying with God's heart. Okay. That's so good. The, the time is already gone. I know. Where did it I go? I don't like this. <laughs> we'll have to do it again. We'll have to do it again. <laughs> what an idea. What do you think? What about doing this again next week? I don't know. Are you busy on Thursday? I think Thursday's a great day. <laughs> what do you guys think? <laughs> yeah, Would what do you, you guys be think? up to being a part of another insight for the days in which we live? On, on a Thursday, and we will pick the time and we'll let you know. How's that? <laughs> yes, we will let you guys know very soon what time, but okay. Thursday for sure. And yep. it's always available on replay. So if you guys don't catch it live, you can hop on and watch the replay. Also, if you guys are like, what if you're watching this and thinking, oh man, I wish that blah, 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 all these people were on this, you can go ahead and just tag them in the comments and or hit the share button share it to your page share it to um in your messages to them um just so they can be a part of it as well okay so this is james gall and you know i want to go about another half hour okay but let's get real you have another zoom waiting for you probably okay this is james gall with gone encounters ministries with a goal to bring insight 
and for the days in which we live. Rachel, would you read Daniel 12, 3 for our people again in closing? Yeah. Daniel 12, 3 is our theme verse for this um, insight with Jane Skull, a little Facebook live show that we're doing. And it is those who have insight will shine brightly like the brightness of the expanse of heaven and those who lead the many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Amen. Well, thank you and share this with others. And we are going to grow together in insight to shine bright when the night is the darkest. Amen. God bless you. Have a good night or morning or wherever you guys are from.